Hey everybody, it's Ethan again. For those of you that don't know me, for those of you that do, I'm still Ethan. Uh, sorry for my appearance. I just came out of the shower. Uh, just got out of the shower. That's a weird phrasing. Uh, today, I wanted to touch on the topic of growing up without a father. As you might have guessed from reading the title of the video. Um, I know it might be a sensitive topic for a lot of people. It used to be a sensitive topic for me. But I guess I've kind of overcome that, which is why I feel comfortable speaking about it now. But, you know... Um, I mostly just wanted to speak about it because of the fact that I feel like it's a topic that a lot of people relate to. But a lot of people don't really speak about on a more sincere level. I make jokes with friends who are also fatherless, you know, um, about being quote unquote fatherless. Um, and it's all fun, you know, it's all funny. None of us really have an issue with it, but I feel like maybe there is an issue in the fact that we're not addressing it at any point with a little bit more sincerity. You know, um, I think that at least for myself growing up uh, without a father kind of left a lot to be desired. Um, you know, I found myself in situations where I just very much wished that I had some kind of fatherly figure to, to help me get along, you know, I, uh, I ended up teaching myself how to tie a tie, you know, I taught myself how to work on cars, I taught myself how to drink, you know, I taught myself how to smoke, I taught myself everything that a man is supposed to know how to do, right, I taught myself how to shave, but, you know, there were obviously points where I just would sit there and wish I had someone who could teach me how to do these things instead of having to teach myself. And I don't think anyone ever really touches on the void or, you know, the hole that is left within you when you grow up without that figure. Right? Um, and it's just kind of weird. Because, you know, for the longest time, I always had told myself that it was okay. You know, that I didn't feel anything about it. That I didn't feel as though I needed a fatherly figure or anything to get by. Especially as I got older and older, I kept, I guess, lying to myself. You know? Um... But I think at the end of the day, I kind of always still had those questions about myself. Uh, you know, questions that couldn't be answered without the presence of a fatherly figure. You know, um, I always only had one side of the picture. And so that's why I think it's kind of important for us to be able to kind of talk about it a little bit more openly. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a certain emptiness that comes with being raised by just one parent, you know? And that's not to say that my mother didn't do the best that she could have or that she didn't try her best or whatever, what have you. It's not to rag on my mother, but it's, you know, just like, especially as, as a man growing up, you know, as a boy growing up, there are certain things that you just might need the presence of a male parent Four. You know, and I, uh, I just spent a lot of nights up alone with a lot of questions that nobody could answer. Probably amongst the toughest of them all was just, why doesn't my father want me? You know, that, like that episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, that episode always made me cry, like unreasonably hard. But it's just because I could relate. 
when Will is hugging Uncle Phil and he just, while crying, just says, why doesn't he want me? And I think, to a certain extent, anyone who's grown up without a fatherly figure can probably relate, to some extent, to that line, to that scene. And, um, you know, you probably learn to, to kind of hide the, the hurt, you know, or push it aside or just put it at the back of your mind and try to continue living life, you know. Um, but then there's, there's kind of always those questions, right? Even in situations where you know who your father is or you know where they might be, but you just, they're just not present. There's still going to be questions. And, um, you know, it can be, it can be pretty rough. You know, I think it's kind of a part of the reason why for a larger portion of my life, I just kind of found myself attaching myself to anything that could be seen as relatively close to a male figure. You know, I had my first stepdad latched myself onto him. My older brother latched myself onto him. You know, even some of my male teachers along the years, you know, would attach myself onto them. But I don't know that that's the, the best way to go about it, you know. I mean, it's not necessarily wrong or unhealthy because who knows? They might be good male figures that you can follow, you know, and you might not regret it. But at the same time, I think maybe the best choice would be to in a way kind of conjure up the idea of who you want to be as a man in the future and just pursue that because that's what I've been doing now and I'll admit ever since I started doing that I'm probably in the best place that I've been you know that was a big part of why I started this journey was because I wanted to be the kind of man that a younger version of myself would be proud to be to have become at some point you know uh just the version of myself that i always envisioned myself being and i think that any other person who's been raised you know without the presence of a fatherly figure might be able to benefit from doing something similar um yeah because it just created a lot of negative emotions within me when I was allowing myself to experience them, you know, like resentment, um, self-pity, you know, abandonment issues, all those kinds of things. And they were unhealthy. They were very unhealthy. I don't think anyone should entertain those kinds of thoughts or feelings more than they need to address them kind of try to either validate or invalidate them with proof you know and then uh, you know work on them heal from them because that's the only way you'll ever improve you know um, but yeah growing up fatherless as always, if you want to share your story or just need somebody to listen, feeling any range of negative emotions, I'm here. I'm always here. Just reach out through any of the various social media links in the description. I'll always answer 24-7, 365, no matter who you are, where you are. Rain, sleet, hail, snow, sun. Just reach out. Because you're not alone. You're never alone. Yeah. Love you. Take care. Bye.